So as you can see, we're going we're gonna to be working on percent application problems today, basically taking what we know about fractions and decimals and percents and applying them to some real-life situations where we may be talking about sales and discounts, uh, might be talking about tips and taxes, um, and also talk a little bit about percent of change. But we're going to apply what we know about percents to some more real-life situations. Uh, real quickly, want to review on a couple things we talked about last week with percents and fractions and everything else. Um, we know that a percent is a ratio with a denominator of 100. Percent literally means per every 100. So that would be an important piece of information to understand. If we had 13%, that's 13 per every 100. And then more importantly from last week, that percent proportion that we've talked about, uh, A is P percent of B as a proportion. Uh, the, the 100 is always on the bottom. Obviously, the percent is over that 100. And then you have to figure out which, which of those two numbers is the A and which one is the B. And you can set up a percent proportion to solve. And so you'll see something like that pretty similarly here close. But just wanted to review that and make sure we understand. Some new stuff. Uh, and you might have some background knowledge on this, but some things that we're going to look for in the notes and on the assignment today. First thing is percent of change. Uh, what I want to notice, a percent of change describes how much a quantity increases or decreases. Um, we have an original amount, it changes, and we want to know what the percent of change was. If my grade went up, what was the percent of change? Um, if a sale price or an item was on sale, uh, what was the percent of change there? One thing you want to make sure you understand that it's always based on the original amount. Whatever that percent of change is, is the percent of the original. And so that will be very important when we set up our fraction down the road. Um, percent of increase obviously just means that the new amount is greater than the original, uh, that that new amount has it, the original amount went up and became bigger, it increased. Um, percent of decrease then obviously would mean that the new, the new amount is less than the original. Really because percent of change is always about the original amount based on the original amount, it's pretty straightforward for finding percent of change. To find the percent of change, it says the P percent equals the amount of increase or decrease over the original amount. Um, the amount of increase or decrease over the original amount. So let me give you a real quick example before we do a word problem. If 10 became 15, and I wanted to know the amount of increase or the, the percent of change. So notice the amount of increase, it went from 10 to 15, so it went up 5. The amount of increase would be 5. The original amount would be what we had to start with, which would be 10. So we'd have 5 out of 10. I want that as a percent. And so notice 5 out of 10 is 50%. The other way I could have done that is with the percent proportion. 5 out of 10 equals P out of 100. But that would be a 50%. And then we always want to include increase or decrease because that increased by 50% of the original since 5 is 50% of 10. Just a real quick overview of percent of change. As always, if you need to pause the video or rewind, you sure can. But that gives you an idea of percent of change and how to find percent of change. Um, now let's apply that to a, a problem and let's apply some other uh, fraction decimal percent ideas to some other problems. Number one says three months ago, Joe Bob could run three miles in 40 minutes. Now he can run three miles in 25 minutes and I want to find the percent of change for his time. So notice when we talk about percent of change, we want to look for the original amount. We want to look for the new amount. We want to find that, that amount of increase or decrease and then we want to find that original amount. So notice the original amount, the beginning, said three months ago uh, he could run this three miles in 40 minutes. Uh, now he can run the three miles in 25 minutes. So to figure this out, remember, we always want to look at the amount of change over the original amount. The amount of change, well, the idea is 40 became 25. So what's that amount of change? The change is 15. And actually, to be precise, it's gone down 15. He shaved 15 minutes off his time. That's the amount of change over the original amount. Remember, it's always a percent of the original amount, so that original amount is 40. And I'd set my proportion up so that 15 over 40 equals P over 100. Um, obviously, some strategies definitely reduce the 15 over 40 if possible, divide them both by 5, and I get 3 eighths is what percent out of 100. And now I can use a percent proportion uh, like I've set up here and use cross products. So we see that 8P equals 300 uh, and divide both sides by 8 to figure out this percent. So notice 300 divided by 8. I'm just trying to do some quick division here to get this figured out. Remember, if I need to, I can always add a decimal and add a zero. In this case, that would give us 37.5%. And notice, because his time went down, this would be a decrease. What this means is his time is actually decreased by 37.5% of his original amount. So that's just a couple examples on percent of change. That's not the only way that we're going to do application problems here today. We're going to look at some other ways that we can also apply what we know about fractions and decimals and percents. So second question. It says the bill for your meal at Isabella's is $22. You leave a 15% tip. Sales tax is 6%. What is the total cost of your meal? By the way, if you're at Isabella's, I strongly recommend the Cajun pizza. It is delicious. You'll thank me later. Anyway, it costs $22. I want to figure out what the total cost of my meal is with a 15% tip and a 6% sales tax. One thing to keep in mind, 
what we always want to remember is if I'm looking for a total cost of a meal or something like that, I can't forget this $22 either. And so not only do I want 15% of the 22 and 6% of the 22, but I want ori that original 22. That original would be that 100%. So just 100% of the original equals $22. But not only do I want 100% for my original bill, but I also want to have 15% of that for the tip, and I want to have 6% of that for the sales tax. And so what I really want is 121% of my original bill, bill, which was $22. I want the first 100% plus the sales tax and the tip. To figure this out a couple ways. First of all, like we talked about last week, of typically means to times. I could multiply these two numbers. If I changed 121% to 1.21 and multiplied these, that would be one way to approach this. Another way to remember is we could always look at our percent proportion. Since it's of $22, $22 would be our bottom number. We don't know what this original is, and that would be equal to 121 over 100. Up to you which way to work. Whichever works best for you works good for me. Notice you're going to end up doing some cross products with the proportion, or you could just multiply down here with some decimal uh, multiplication, and that's the way that I'm going to opt for today. I'm just going to try to do some quick multiplication and see what this ends up being. As I add this up, I get $2,662. Wait, that doesn't seem right. Remember, don't forget to go back and count the decimal places. I have two decimal places in my factors, so I'm going to move my decimal two places to the left, and it looks like if we had a $22 ticket, we tipped for 15%, and we had a 6% sales tax, we'd have $26.62 total to pay. So just another application problem there where we're talking about sales tax and, and the tip. Um, we also might see a discount or sale like this. Uh, Mr. Munger bought an awesome suit. Clearly that suit is awesome. Bought an awesome suit on sale for 20% off the original price of $180. What is the sale price? Um, some things to think about here. If we're looking at 20% off of the original price of $180, if the sales price is 20% off, well, I always want to think of what that new price would be. Well, the, the original price is $180. That's 100%. So if it's 20% off, we would want to subtract 20%, and what we're looking for is what's 80% of $180? We want 80% for that sales price. Again, you could multiply this or you could set up a percent proportion. It's up to you. Since it's of 180, I could have 180 on the bottom equals 80 over 100. The nice thing about this, if it's 80 over 100, we can reduce that, and we'd actually have A over 180 equals 4 over 5. That would be one way to work this out using some cross products. The other way to do it, like we just did, take 180 times 80%, but we'd have to change 80% to a decimal, and that would be 0.8. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and use my cross products here, and I'm going to say that 5A equals 720. I've just used the cross products for my proportion. Last thing I need to do is divide on both sides by 5. So A is going to equal whatever 720 divided by 5 is. As I do my division, just remember this isn't the only way that you could do this. Uh, you could have opted to just do the decimal multiplication as well. Looks like the sales price, and since it's a price, I'm going to use a dollar sign, is going to end up being $144. That's the sale price. The original $180 suit, 20% off, and it's $144. The question, how much did he save? Two ways to work this out. We could set up another proportion. If he saved, that's the discount, so that's the 20 out of 100. I could set up a proportion and solve it that way. The more obvious way, take the original cost, take the sale price, and then figure out how much he actually saved, which in this case would be $36. But again, just another example of percent application problem. One last, uh, more difficult example maybe of how we might apply the percent proportion and everything else uh, in a word problem situation. It says a group of diners at Pizza Hut left a 15% tip in the amount of $10.25. What was the cost of their meal when they got the bill? So notice this is a little trickier than the one we did earlier. It tells you that they left the 15% tip, and it actually tells you that the 15% tip was 1025. That's what the tip was. Well, what the question asks is what's the cost of their total meal? Uh, what's the cost of their meal when they got the bill? And so again, a percent proportion is going to be handy here, but you've got to be careful about what you set up. Obviously, 15% tip, that gives you the percent out of 100. The question now is, is 1025 the total number? Is 1025 the part? And if it was a tip, if it was a 15% tip, that number is going to actually go on top. And it would be 1025 over this bottom number that we don't know yet. Uh, 15 out of 100 equals 10.25 out of what? Setting up that proportion. Um, again, we can use cross products, the nice thing here. We'd have 15B equals 1,025 when I multiply by 100, and then I just need to divide both sides by 15. A um, little tricky on the division here. As I set this up, I want to make sure that 1,025 is inside uh, the, the division bar here. 
I'm going to divide this. Now I notice that 15 goes into 102 six times. That gives me a 90. Um, and then I see that I have a 12, and I'll bring down the 5. Um, and how many times does that go in? Well, that goes in 8 times, which gives us 120. Bring down the 5, add a decimal. How many times does 15 go into 50? Well, that's going to be 3. And now you're going to see this repeating pattern, 15 into 50, 3 again. And we'll end up being able to round, and we will say that this costs $68.33. So again, some quick examples on uh, percent application problems. Whether we're setting up a percent proportion uh, given the tip, whether we're looking at discounts and sales, um, we've also taken a little look at finding the total cost, and then we also looked at percent of change. Remember, that was the most new information was the idea of finding the percent of change based on the original amount. But a lot of different ways that we can apply what we know using fractions, decimals, and percents, and that's what your assignment's going to be all about today.